Morning, Kelly. Good morning. Good morning, it's 9.30, and I'd like to call the Tuesday, October 8th, regular meeting of Athabasca County Council to order. We acknowledge that Athabasca County is located on First Nations Treaty 6 and Treaty 8 traditional territory. We respect and honour all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people's connection to these lands, their history, language, and culture. The first item of business is the approval of the agenda. The items that must be discussed that I'm aware of are as follows. 4.1, 4 4.2, 4 4.3, 8.2, uh, 10 point, nope. And uh, item number 12.2, I'd like to add 12.3, which is 16.1, business interests of a third party, that's follow up from 4.3 and delete 12.1. So under 12, it's delete 12.1 and add 12.3, which is section 16.1, business interest of a third party. Are there additional items to that you would like to take off the consent agenda? Seeing none, Councilor Mintz. Uh, let's look at 10.1, uh, J. 10.1 J and uh, I'm thinking 7.1 and 7.1 please. I, I'll also add, I will add 10.1 X. I just um, don't have my notes with me, so I, it won't be as, uh, as elaborative as it might be, but I that's okay. We'll go from memory. Councillor Chamzik. 
Um, I'd like to add 8.1A as well, please. 8.1A. Any other items? So the items that I have on the list, uh, sorry, Councilor Cromwell has sent his regrets. Uh, we have item number 2.1, obviously, uh, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 7.1, 8.1A, 8.2, 10.1J, 10.1X, and uh, delete 12.1, we're going to discuss 12.2 and 12.3, which is the addition under section 16.1, business interests of a third party. Councilor Gerlich, are you interested in making a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Councilor Gerlich has moved the council adopt the agenda as amended. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none on the question of the adoption of that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed, count is uh, eight and zero and the motion is adopted. We, uh, delegations are scheduled for 10. So the first item, 7.1 on page 38 of your agenda, Councillor Minns, you'd like a motion to make a motion? I'll make the recommended motion. Council approves the Friends of the Athabasca Public Library Archives Society funding request for 1500 for the Taste of the Athabasca event. Do you wanna, so Councillor Minns has made a motion that Council approve the Friends of Athabasca Public Library and Archive Society's funding requests at $1,500 for the Taste of Athabasca event. The floor is yours. Do you all have other comments you'd like to add? I was just wondering, like I know uh, this is a great event and everything like that, that but it, on the on the sheet there on page <clears throat> 45, the uh, town of Athabasca, there's only a grant for $500. We're being asked for $1,500. Is there like is that all, all the town is going to give this 500? That's that's their Sorry, do you want to put your mic on now? Sorry, Dr. Wallach, do you know something? That's about? their uh, grant funding policies, $500 max. Oh, okay. So, and we don't have a max. Really, we don't have a max in our in our policy. I think we just tentatively approved almost $20,000 last meeting for a different project. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned it. Okay, no, I was just... Just bring that up for discussion. Why the town? Why the town is only maxing out at five hundred, but we're being asked for fifteen hundred. So, but it's a good cause. Other comments or discussion? Uh, hold on, Councillor Chamzik. Yeah, no, I think it's an excellent uh, program. It just promotes more arts and culture within our area. And I'm really excited to attend this year. That's all I have. It seems to be a good, a great community event that brings people together and uh, our support enables groups like the Lions uh, and the Library Society to host that gathering of the community. So I support it as well. If there are no further comments and you're ready for the question, the question is on the adoption of the motion to approve the Friends of the Athabasca Public Library and Archive Society's funding request for $1,500 to support the Taste of Athabasca event. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The count is eight and zero. The motion is adopted. Councilor Chamzik, you had uh, put 8.1 on the agenda. Do you want to? Yeah, you betcha. Um, for just this Friday is our turkey trot, just to remind everyone for the eight kilometer walk that our community does in support of Terry Fox, but also starting up here, um, Grassland Egg Society has a group of volunteers. We're doing our soup for our seniors starting October 18th at noon at the Grassland Hall, and it's open to Grassland, Atmore, Amber Valley, and Prospita seniors. It'll be running every third week for the winter months. The next one will be November 15th. Um, is there anyone willing to make a motion to accept the community events calendars for information? I can do that. Councillor Chamzik has moved. We accept the community events calendars for information. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, on the question of the adoption of that motion, all those in favour? Aye. Opposed? The count is eight and zero and the motion is adopted. 
The uh, meeting calendars are at number 8.2. Is there any um, changes or additions? Councilor Chamzik, I'll give the floor to you first and then we'll move around here. I actually don't have any right now. Thank you. Okay. Councilor Mittens, Councilor Holland. Thank you. It would just be to um, request uh, the option to change November 26th to the 28th for the MPC meeting, dependent, of course, on the workload. CAO, does you, the administration have any advice on that, or would you rather wait till closer to the date? On November twenty sixth. Yeah. And what again? What was what was the proposal, Mister? To move it to the twenty eighth. I think it's a great idea. Can we? Can I just check, and we'll report back at the next meeting. Yep. Councillor Wallach. Um, well, on October 24th, uh, Councillor Keptank and I are attending the EDA Fall Ministry Dinner. EDA Ministry Dinner. Councillor Anderson. I don't have anything to add, but I would personally be opposed to moving the MPC mo meeting so far in advance, um, just because if we do end up needing to book one more special meeting for budget, it would, that would be a day that I would like to just keep on the calendar so that we have something available and could move it closer to time if need be. And I think the plan is to wait till closer to that date to let administration and the chair figure it out. Uh, Councilor Kapitanik. I don't think I have anything to add. Sure. Okay, no, next time, please use your mic. Um, Councillor, I see you, Councillor Chamzik. We'll go to Councillor Gerlich and then with. I guess the only thing Councilor that I Chamzik, do have. Councillor Gerlich has the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess the only thing to report is we did have blue hair yesterday. So it's. Okay. <laughs> it... Next, that's it. Councillor Chamzik, the floor returns to you. I guess the only thing that I do have is October 30th is uh, ASB uh, chairs meeting in the city. Okay. Councillor Holland. Thank you. Just one more thing to add. October 9th uh, tomorrow is the uh, Memorandum of Understanding signing for Athabasca Land Trail with all five municipalities. Do you have a time for that? It will be between eight well, when you're available, 8.45, right through until the end of the day, until we get back from the uh, the trip, if we're doing a complete trip. You're doing a trip to get them all done? Yes. Okay. So I'll um, let's plan to do that as close to 8.45, 9 as we can. 8.45 would be great. Thank you. Tomorrow. Just making a note so that I do show up. <laughs> yeah, uh, anything else? Councillor Mintz. I was just gonna ask through the chair to, to Councillor Chamzik if any decision was made on the ASB meeting for October. Yeah. I have, my apologies. I have not received um, anything back that I noticed this morning. And as soon as I, check back hopefully we will have a date soon that works for everyone okay perfect thank you you're There's welcome no asb meeting scheduled yet uh it would be in order to receive a motion to adopt the calendars as amended councillor mins has made the motion to adopt the calendars as amended if there's any further discussion now's the time seeing none if you're ready for the question the question is on the adoption of the motion to approve the meeting calendars as amended all those in favor Aye. Opposed? Count is eight and zero, and the motion is adopted. Moving on to 10.1J. Councillor Minns, the floor is yours. Uh, Athabasca Regional Waste Management Services uh, Commission. We had a meeting yesterday morning. Uh, well, actually, it was an all-day event. Went on a 
great road tour to uh, the regional landfill. Hooked up the new uh, new cell. I don't want to say hole, but a new cell that they made, which is also old. <laughs> and uh, I think in a neighborhood of around one point six million dollars was spent in that uh, in that cell. And uh, it looks uh, it looks great. There's uh, of course some discussion with the contractor and over the contract and everything like that, which is pretty well normal for all any any contracts to happen and and uh, so we had a great tour there and then uh the afternoon we came back here and, and uh, had a meeting and uh i know it's, it was on everybody's minds here regarding the one uh transfers item eight business arising from minutes uh letter a transfer sites cost savings plan <laughs> and uh and that uh, that was more of an information item that was that was sent out for discussion, and uh, we had a great discussion regarding it. That uh, it went back to administration to come back for with costs that is costing us through through the commission for. Uh, transportation of these white goods and and mattresses and, and and different ideas so so that was not not accepted through the board on uh, the cost saving analysis there and, and it went back so and and uh and to figure out where everybody gets treated fairly instead of one entity having to pay for other entities so so yeah, no, it was actually a very great discussion, and and uh, the Basque County wasn't the only ones to stand up and say that that doesn't work. So, so it was great to see our neighbors and not uh, have our backs also. So, uh, what else was in there? Uh, there was payroll options discussed. Uh, Looks like we're going to go to a private source for payroll. Uh, it's still, uh, the employees will be going with the Athabasca County um, benefits and that. So the new EPR is coming out starting in, in April and there'll be, there'll be some cost savings to the commission for that. Right now it's just on curbside pickup there will be uh, another, oh, another, uh, I guess, contract being sent out regarding transfer sites and, and depots. So, and that's that's based on, hopefully by the end of end of December, we'll have an idea on, on all three of them contracts. So other than that, uh, financials look good. Um, just starting to discuss budgets. So, so we were, we were going that way, and and uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if uh, Reed Paul's got anything else to. On the budget side, uh, there's some expectation that it will be a late-ish submission because uh, the EPR changes the the numbers that relate to that are coming in slowly and over time, so we're not likely to see that. I think like early December is kind of the hope for some of that, and for clarity, um, the. Yeah, the, the motion around the cost saving thing was to to direct administration to come back with a proposal on a balanced and equal approach across the region. So it was fairly specific, I think, to to look at that. And and as uh, Councillor Minza said, there was fairly uh, uh, unanimous support to um, to to revisit that 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 the, the proposed model wasn't something that worked and I think you know it's important to explore alternatives but once you get into the mechanics of it it was clear that it wasn't going to meet the needs of the commission um I'll share with council that I you know I am finding myself increasingly troubled by the level of participation of CAOs from other municipalities and commission meetings as if they're members and I don't know what and how we deal with it but um there's a level of um I question the appropriateness of of that in some cases, and I want to bring it to your attention because I I think that um, 
Certainly in the past, we've seen um, situations where people who are not members of the board have been in a closed session on a performance review or a wage discussion, or even in even participating from the gallery, I think is uh, something we need to be more aware of. I appreciate deeply the professionalism of our own CAO in either um, only responding when directly asked by the board or or um, I think recognizing that it's not his board and not attending every meeting. But I, I just, with the CAO participating, it feels to me like uh, some of our partners have more members at the table than, than they uh, are allotted. Anyway. The, the other thing is we're gonna be going through a wage review, uh, wage review for the employees of the commission and not to, so. Oh, you say it louder. Yeah, yeah. We're going to be going through a wage review for the. Uh, there was a uh, motion made to employee wage and grid review, so we're going to be doing that. I think that's positive work of the board. There's a source uh, for within the garbage, the waste commission uh, group that compiles all that data, and it's uh, important to. Yeah. Like it's good work on the part of the board to keep that up to date and make sure the overall package for employees is is being. Um, is reasonable and fair. Is that all? Yeah, that's uh, next meeting is December 9th and hopefully we'll have some more information. Okay. Thanks for that report. Um, the 10.1X uh, is the Northeast Alliance for Growth and Opportunity. And as it turns out, I had pre-planned this so well that I had put my notes in my binder. So I attended that meeting in the afternoon of October 3rd in Lamont. Um, the um there's uh minister hussein uh, who's from the province related to immigration is uh intending on hosting a workshop or the ministry would be hosting a workshop on the rural renewal stream and um so one question i have for our table is is there any interest in having uh, county staff or councillors attend that and so i i guess just by is there is do we see any we've rejected uh, participating in that we we were in and then we were out um councilor chamzik well in my opinion um pretty much recalling some of the reasons why that we in the past have not uh, done it um i would be in favor if administration feels that they have the time to be able to attend um, it never hurts to have that extra information. So I'll I'll just forward it on. And if anybody is interested, then you'll have the stats and the date and time. And if the CAO sees value in sending his own people, then they'll know that too. That hasn't come back yet. One of the other topics of discussion was uh, AGLC and the need to, uh, th this uh, idea of pot the potential to equalize casino payments to charities across the province. And that's uh, the responsibility of Mr. Minister Nally's portfolio. Um, I had forwarded out uh, via email the graph of kind of the the annualized uh, allotment per charity from each of the different zones. And it's very clear there's a wide uh, and deep inequity uh, and in how that impacts rural charities. And um, I'm sure we would all agree that, uh, you know, some of the urban casinos that reap the highest uh, rewards are also benefiting from rural uh, players spending their money at the casino. So that was one of the things that came up was this idea that um, that it uh, there, it may make sense to start looking at lobbying the government to, to reconsider a more equitable distribution. Um, the other piece in there that's related but separate and uh, past the date for comments being open, but still there was an encouragement to send letters if you want to AGLC related to the relocation of the Camaros Casino. Um, and uh, it it had uh, there'd been rejected uh, a couple times in the past. They also uh, one of the discussion items talked about the health initiative, and uh, so there's a, a a health announcement on Thursday in Hinton, which I did not follow up on, so I can't uh, tell you what that was. Uh, we talked about a, a 75 bed mental health recovery center uh, slated for coming uh, toward Mady Crossing, and. Um, Tim McPhee, on behalf of the uh, the group, had talked to uh, the minister, health minister at uh, AB Muni's, 
and uh, she invited, uh, was open to the discussion and in, basically uh, asked to coordinate, the group to coordinate the kind of key issues that are happening in the region. And uh, so through NAGO, there will be a survey come out and it'll come to councils for us to kind of gather out of our region and in partnership, we'll coordinate it with the town and village because it's because of our region, the key uh, key issues and bumps we're seeing in the healthcare system. And, you know, the short list that I kind of thought of and we talked about while we're sitting there, there's you know, questions around ambulances and ambulance availability, mental health supports, um, the potential regionalization of PCN, which I don't know a lot about, but I understand is uh, one of the discussion topics. Um, and um, so what are our capacities? What are our capabilities? And what are, what are our concerns? There's um, the note I made uh, from, uh, I, I believe uh, this was one of the MLAs that said there are big decisions being made about the regionalization of PCNs by the end of October. Um, there's still uh, the the uh, idea there is still to continue to to seek a northeast health zone, and uh, because of the the change right now, this is still the best opportunity to do that. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, alternate transportation and ambulances. So ambulances often are getting used to transport uh, ambulatory patients, and that don't necessarily need the level of care that's available in an ambulance. And so, are there other ways to more economically move people? The topic of rural crime came up. Um, that was kind of an off agenda item that came on at the end. And, uh, you know, some feeling from a couple of the uh, leaders there that the Bail Reform Act is not working. And, um, you know, one of the best ways to prevent reoccurrence of uh, repeat offenders is to, to keep them in custody for a little bit longer than a few minutes. Minister Dreeshen also attended the meeting electronically around the Highway 28 work and that you'll know is uh, a lobby that's been key to that group and that we've been supportive of. And I think one of the things we should recognize about the, the NAGO group is their their focus and coordination and um, they're, they're not all over the place. They're trying to keep pretty steady on a few key issues. So the engineering on passing lanes are starting soon. Uh, there's a plan for uh, utility work uh, in the spring out in that area. And uh, so then they're going to, next spring is the time to start beginning to acquire land, to work on a twinning. And uh, to quote the minister, this is a priority for the province. They're going to share a map on the passing lane locations as soon as it's available and a goal within the next month. And, uh, you know, ask, they, they ask kind of uh, from the MLAs and the, that were there, and the minister, when he spoke, was to, if we see Treasury Board members, to remind them that um, Highway 28 is an important regional connector. And um, because uh, money all, all flows through Treasury Board. The Treasury Board process is starting in October this year, which is earlier than normal as well. And, um, and then there's uh, the draft stage of the resource map is out. There were some requests to change that. Uh, we all heard the minister speak about this at RMA in the past, where they want to be able to kind of map the where the resources come from with uh, on a province-wide map. I think um, Councillor Wallach probably saw the draft and they're they're working on there's some some revisions re requested on that. Um, MLA Van Dyken uh, was clear when he spoke uh, that any advocacy that we do related to um, roads and bridges we need to make sure we have a that we address the safety component because safety is certainly a big part of the department's mandate. And so if we're speaking to the Altac Bridge or any of those other things, um, we know there's a safety issue in there, but we need to make sure we we put that, that we address that as part of our, our presentations. And that's all the pages that I have on that meeting. Um, the, the nice thing about that group is they're very solution based. They're not running to the to government officials with problems. They're they're going to them with solutions to problems, and uh, I think it's a great way to do business. Uh, it's about five minutes to ten. It would be appropriate to take a motion to ex receive the reports for information, and then we'll take a five minute break before the delegation. Councillor Holland has moved. We receive the reports for information. Any further discussion?
Seeing none on the question of the adoption of that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The count is eight and zero. The motion's adopted and we will adjourn until one minute before 10. to reconvene the October 8th meeting of Athabasca County Council. Um, as a reminder for council, we have not ordered lunch because uh, we should be able to be out of here at a reasonable time today. Um, we are at uh, item number 4.1. We have a delegation from uh, Mr. Ryan Park and Mr. Jay Lee of, of uh, Grassland. Our normal practice is uh, that we will do introductions. So welcome, uh, Mr. Park and Mr. Lee. Thank you for coming and joining us. Um, we'll do introductions around the table and then uh, then the floor becomes yours and you, you have uh, the chance to talk. As a reminder about process, the delegation is a time for you to present information to us. Council then has the opportunity to ask questions around uh, clarifying things you've said 
And then later in the agenda, uh, there's a potential for council to talk about it or at a subsequent meeting for council to have a more discussion, thorough discussion. So on, um, on your right is our CAO, Mr. Bob Beck. We have recording secretary, mm -hmm. Ms. Blair. We have communications coordinator, Mr. Schenkelberg. And then Councillor Mintz, do you wanna? Good morning, uh, uh, Rob Mintz, uh, Division 8, Baptist Lake Island, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Good morning and welcome. Thank you for being here. Tracy Holland, Division 5, which is east of Athabasca, Amber Valley, Paxson, Parkview, and many subdivisions. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Camille Wallet, Division 9, north of the river. Um, Brian Hall, as you know, elected in Division 4. And on the screen, Councillor Council Kelly Chamzik is there joining us uh, remotely. Councillor Cromwell sends his regrets. Good morning, Ashton Anderson. I reside in Division 3, which is the Boyle Castle area. Good morning, Joe Gerlach from the Rochester Federal area, Division 1. Again, thank you. The floor is yours. Yeah, good morning. Um, I'm Jay Lee, and he, he, this gentleman is Mr. Park. From we we are from Grassland. Uh, we operate the business uh, business at the Grassland uh, Grassland Lamada Petro Canada and Eldorado Restaurant. So I'm here to bring up some <coughs> some concerns about our utility bill, uh, especially water bill at the grassland area uh, we are currently paying about nine dollars or cubing cubing uh, cubing meter uh, and it seems like it's, <clears throat> it's it's like really high like I did some research and some of some, uh, I did research for the other Alberta municipals, and we are the we are the most expensive. Uh, we are having most expensive auto bills, and auto bills right now, and yeah, apparently somewhere like even in Edmonton is paying around one dollar for cubing meter. Yeah, so I'm. I I just wanna let you know, and I just wanna see if there's anything could be done mm -hmm. to help the businesses out and uh, even the communities out. Yeah, so um, it's um, we checked them out for the research for the old uh, uh, other municipal uh, government water bills. So our uh, count is the most higher bill uh, than any other uh, municipal government. So um, I don't know why is it that high, maybe bad management or something, or uh, so good quality orders, or our government is uh, like managing for the, like, uh, Mafia, some things. I totally don't understand for why is there for uh, increase for twenty or thirty percent. It's okay, but hundred percent. Who else uh, agree for the hundred percent to increase? It's my bill is for compared to twenty twenty two or twenty twenty one. It's four hundred percent increase, so I pay for now is for thirteen thousand dollars. Some months is fourteen thousand dollars, higher than mortgages. Some things. So um, maybe mid page is something wrong, or uh, usually for daily um, per person for the. Uh, figure it out for about 300 uh, liter between 400 liter using per day. But last month, is that we our hotel is that we sold for 2,000 uh, rooms. But uh, so 2,000 room times for 400, then uh, it's uh, um, like. Meter is way higher than um, average figure out. 
So um, maybe meta reading system is something wrong, or um, we check them out every rooms and every toilets and all the um, water using area, not leaking at all, but that water, uh, that consumption is way too high. And then hotel is we pay for about 13,000, 14,000 uh, months. And then uh, truck stop is the same thing, it's about 13,000, 14,000 uh, months. Used to, to be, we pay for 2,500, between 3,500. But it's um, sky high, some things. So then um, somewhere, something problems. Maybe our problem or uh, uh, water management is, uh, is there something wrong? We don't know. We keep checking out, but bill is uh, still higher than uh, any other counties. Maybe um, somebody explain something, why is uh, compared to any other counties, our county water bill is uh, why is it double lower than uh, any other municipal governments? So it's, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Price, not a question and answer from council. We're just here to listen to the information and then discuss it later. So if you're, if yeah, you're, when, if you're looking when, for an answer to that question, it's, it won't be happening right yeah, now. Yeah, when is uh, that you guys figured it out for increasing the the uh, new water bills? So then you can using for the some kind of data for we can increase for this much because chemical is so expensive labor is so expensive, power is so expensive, or we we have to hire the high quality technician something for the water man, uh, the treatment. So maybe something is uh, too much expensive. That's why it, uh, that for cubic meter for $5 something is up to $11. So, Maybe some kind of uh, gangsters involved for the these counties. That's why it's this much that the increases. I totally don't understand for why it, that the power bill or gas bill is usually 15%, 20% increase. When we buying and selling, our margin is for 25% between 40% maximum. That maximum we can put it in the 40% margins. This water bill is a five dollar between to increasing for eleven dollars. What kind of data is using for this much increase? Some things. Anyone explain something? Again, Mr. Park, uh, the delegations are about presenting information to council. It's not a question and answer and response period. Um, so council will discuss the, your concerns at the. Uh, at a future meeting, I believe is the uh, is the plan. Uh, once we've had the benefit of some advice from administration as well, um, but I certainly we've heard your concern about the changes in water rates. And uh, are you uh, are you willing to share the research that you've done on uh, competing municipalities with the administrative? Yeah, we team? have. A, I can print out for the uh, each page is. Uh... I can get the two of them. One one copy is plenty because the administration yeah. will provide it to us at a, at a later time. When, when and now I, I'm not sure if you have more to present or if uh, it's okay now for council to ask some questions of clarification. It's okay. Yeah. I mean, I'll I'll uh, just because we're talking about that data. When you compared rates, did you also compare tax rates across those municipalities as well? How the municipal tax non-residential rate compared? No, that wasn't done. Um, now we probably have some questions at the table. I, um, Councillor Holland, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Um, I appreciate what you're saying here today, and I, I really appreciate you bringing it forward to us. Um, I 
it, it is no secret. We, we changed how we did the calculations. We went from um, a subsidy across the county to user pay, and that really changed the rate. So that is the reason um, I think that you were looking for. Um, and it is being discussed and um, further on in the agenda, which wasn't part of our discussion today as this has gone to administration to come back with more information. So it is being looked into and I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that. Um, it is a concern, not only for yourself, but for others as well. So it's really great that you, Do you have you've come forward to bring that forward. Um, I guess my question um, more than anything is how many municipalities that you looked at and which areas? Like how far out of the range? So we have a pretty much uh, that uh, uh, more than central Aurora to northern Aurora. So it's a big area. So I got the information from the one of the university research. So which was basically done around the March of 2024. And Obviously, this one doesn't include the grassland, but it include it also includes the uh, town of Asabasca and town of Boyle. Okay. So, and apparently, we are the top. We are the one having the most expensive rate uh, across the central uh, across the Alberta. So, I believe I it it has almost hundred different municipalities around the Alberta. Okay. Um, and just to follow up, thank yeah, you very much for, for, for doing that and, and for bringing that forward. Um, is it possible that all council members are able to receive a copy? Yeah. Oh, uh, the request I, is to give it to administration. Oh, to thank come you. Up. Yeah. I appreciate your help. Yeah. And thank you again for coming forward with us today. Mm -hmm. okay. Further questions from council of clarification? Um, so again, as uh, we've mentioned, this uh, administration will take the information you've provided and council will see this again on a future agenda and council will have a better, you know, a longer discussion among council about, uh, about your concerns and about water rates down. Hmm. Thank you for making the trip and for taking the time to uh, talk to us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. And for I apologize. I neglected to introduce Councillor Capitanic because she wasn't uh, sitting there when we went around the room, but uh, right. Councillor Capitanic is also here. Again, appreciate you being here and thank you for uh, the service you provide in Grassland. You want to hear? Yeah. 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 If you need one more, I can do one more for you. It, uh, looking at what's coming up, it would be in order to yeah, take okay. motion. To enter closed session. Councillor uh, Wallach has made a motion to enter closed session. On the adoption of that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The count is eight and zero, and the motion is adopted. And is Councillor Anderson made a motion to leave closed session. We uh, The vote count was eight and zero, and the motion to leave closed was adopted. We are at um, re resolutions coming out of closed session. Uh, Twelve point two, Councillor Anderson, you had them. You had one written down. Do you want to read it? Uh, make motion to direct administration to provide the Aspen Regional Water Services Commission with a letter detailing their intended involvement in the project. Councillor Anderson has made a motion to direct administration to send a letter to the Aspen letter to the Aspen Regional Water Services Commission detailing their involvement in the project, in the their intended involvement in the project. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The count is eight and zero on that motion is adopted. Councillor Capitanic has indicated she would like to make a motion to direct administration to Regarding item 12.3, to direct administration to review and provide advice on the presentation to council. On any further discussion? On the question, the adoption of that motion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Count is eight and zero, and the motion is adopted. There's no further business, and the meeting is adjourned. <laughs>